Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. I'm gonna bring you another video on surviving a nuclear weapon, surviving a nuclear war, dealing with fallout. Hopefully we never have to use it, but if we do, you are the trainer for your community. You are the trainer for your subdivision. You will help other people because you have knowledge that 99% of the people do not have. And when it comes time to, to use this knowledge, you're not gonna have time to grab a book or read it or get on the internet. The internet might not even be there. So you, Take this responsibility serious. You can help people. You can save people's lives by just having a little bit of knowledge. Let's talk about you are out doing your everyday things. You might be at the office. You might be traveling 30, 40 miles to see a friend and something happens. Immediately, you realize that, hey, a nuclear weapon just went off. Now, granted, you are not at ground zero. You're not in the blast. You don't worry about the fire, the thermal effects of that weapon going off but you are not in a safe place you're not at home so what are you gonna do and all of a sudden you notice it's snowing but it's not snow it's dust particles that came from a nuclear weapon going off creating a massive amount of fallout and it's starting to move in your direction now granted that's gonna take time um, it could take an hour to get to you depends where you are it could take multiple hours depends on the weather conditions but let's just assume it happened you're out and about, or maybe you're at the office. Um, if you're at the office, what I want you to do is look at your office, look at your plant, you might work at a plant, look at where you work, and you need to find a fallout shelter there. Because things could happen so fast, so rapidly, uh, you might realize, hey, I can't make it home. So you need to have your other family members educated. Don't just assume, okay, I'll be there to tell them what we gotta do. You might not be there. Because what I want you not to do is to jump in your car and try to make it home. Now, if you're a couple miles away, that's a whole different story. You don't want to get stranded on the interstate with fallout falling. Uh, that's not the answer. And look at all the places when we have a hurricane come through in the south, people jump on the interstate and it gets so clogged up. So you don't want to be sitting in your car waiting for traffic to move and dust starts falling. You need to, to do something before then. So, the four S's. First is shelter. Can you get home? You can't, you need to find shelter. So, in your travels, going back and forth to work and other places, you need to look for potential places that could offer shelter. Buildings, commercial buildings, government buildings, anything like that that has a basement uh, or it's such a huge building with multiple levels, you could get into the inside of that building and seek some cover. That's why you have to have a plan. You gotta tell your spouse or your other significant other, hey, I might not make it home, but don't worry because I'm gonna take shelter because I know I can't be traveling with fallout falling on me. I'm not gonna survive. So, Find some shelter. Next, S's, all S's, strip or shower. You might not be able to strip down and, and shower. It might not be there. So you need to do the best thing. If you had some proper clothing in the sense of a rain suit or something to put on to protect your clothes from it, that's the best. Let's hypothetically say you don't have that, but you're smart enough to have an extra set of clean clothes. Then get there, strip. If you have no water, brush 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 do whatever you can you do not want any of those particles on your skin that fall out it will create a beta uh, a beta burn uh, you don't want that so you need to get clean I'm talking clean if you are exposed to it clean as good as you can scrub 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 do whatever you can to get all that dust off of you um, the best thing is to strip totally naked and throw those clothes away and put your clean clothes on uh, if you believe they're too highly contaminated. Uh, if you can take a shower, do it. Probably can't. So, hopefully you can put on a clean set of clothes. Make sure when you do this in order, find shelter, strip and shower. Don't go into the safest place of that building, all contaminated, and then strip your clothes off, throw them on the ground, and you're, you're gonna try to survive there because you have uh, minutely contaminated your environment. Um, if it wasn't a wartime and we go in there with a Geiger counter, yeah, you'd be like, holy cow. In a wartime, your, your radiation levels um, are going to be minor compared to what's coming. But don't strip down where you're trying to shelter. Next, so we got, we're going to find shelter. We're going to strip and shower if we can. If not, we're going to clean as good as we can by brushing, by using a limited amount of water. Now you're going to find the safest place in that building. 
It could be underground, which is the best place to go. It could be um, a huge building and you go into the center of the building. So you got tons of mass around you and over top of you. That is what you want. So you want to find the best place. So your, your goal now for the next week or so is in your traveling back and forth to work or going to church or going to grocery store or going anywhere. You're looking for alternative places that you could shelter. You might think, well, it's only 12 miles, Dave. In a car, not long, but what happens if you can't get out of the parking lot? People have panicked. 12 miles with radiation falling, you have to you have to gauge that. If you're 70 years old and 12 miles could be a lot. If you're 22 years old and you're in good shape, you might be able to huff it quickly and, and get to your home and, and then do your showering and cleaning up. But your goal, find some spots that I could take temporary shelter. So what are we doing? We're sheltering. You're showering, stripping, cleaning yourself. Your safest place of the building. And number four, staying. How long are you going to stay? If you do have some type of, of Geiger counter with you or something, you could definitely tell. If not, you need to wait until local authorities tell you, hey, it's clear. Or, I'll be honest with you, local authorities might not be operating at this point. The more time you spend in there, the safer it's going to be to get out. So, typically the government says you need to spend a day or two in there before you start traveling again. I can't answer that question, but I will give you some solutions to that problem by giving you some things you could have with you so you can say, hey, I can, I can make, try to make it home, or oh, heck no, I got to stay sheltered in place. But it's important to tell your loved ones that this is my plan. I'm not going to try to make it home if by the time I get home, I'm just, I've been in so much exposure that I'm going to die anyways. So, shelter, strip and shower, safest place in the building, stay. How long do you stay? If you can stay a few days, much better. That radiation level is definitely going to, going to go down. You have to take into account, maybe there'll be multiple strikes though, so it'll be more radiation after the first strike. A lot of variables. Um, I'll show you what I carry. If I was thinking that there's going to be a, a nuclear war, um, a fallout, and that will help you make your decisions better. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.